Uh, this is the final episode in season one of having an outdoor wood boiler on our property. <laughs> and how much maintenance did it take? Every day. <laughs> it takes some maintenance. You don't just flip on the thermostat and walk away. No, we had to feed it every day. And you had to, you often were a little obsessive, a little app obsessive about like if the fire was going low or he would watch all the, Oh yeah. What were they called? Like the history of the I would track boiler. that thing. Yeah. The boiler has like a built-in Wi-Fi dealio. And I would just track that thing it's all the alive. time. It's <laughs> alive. I was tracking that daily. So he would come out in the morning sometimes and be like, I have to add wood. And, and it depended. Like sometimes the wood would just get stuck up high and need to be knocked down or, you know, just need to be stirred oh, yeah. up. A, but oh, on the average you know, day. Average day it was once a day. We just came out here once a day, put wood in it, walked away. And he wanted to do it in the evening. There were some really interesting things in the beginning because he wanted to do it in the evening or in the early dark. in the morning, in the dark. In the dark. And I was like, how about we do it in the middle of the day where it's bright outside? So we switched, you were very, you were very accommodating. Uh, there was no, we yeah, we didn't load it in the dark as much as I would have But wished. we have pretty flexi schedules. Like if you weren't, couldn't be home in the middle of the day, it would be, you'd, you know, you'd probably be better off doing it in the morning, but that would mean it'd be cold at night. So you're kind of like constantly trying to figure out like when to load it and like how much to load it. We did a full load at lunch every day and that worked for us because we could come pretty well. We could stop our work, have lunch, take care of the dogs, take care of the boy. It was like a pet. We had to come out and take care of the boiler. It's a nice looking pet. It's a, <laughs> a little bit on the pricey it's a quiet side. Pet most of the you time. probably you might have seen uh, on the channel that we installed this thing ourselves mm -hmm. and we just kind of went whole hog installing it right before winter and we didn't end up building like a big wood shed for the wood. So we lived in the muck for like whatever that was. November, December. Yeah. No, it was December, January, February, March, April. Just piles of wood covered in snow and stuff. It was a little cold and rugged. Next year, I'm imagining by winter time, we'll have a nice big woodshed built. And That's the plan. <laughs> maybe in four or five years, you know. We'll see. You don't want to rush into things. We were, we were debating about like how the woodshed should be built, what it would look like, where it would go. So, you know, those kinds of things can just... It's going to take five or six years. Yeah. We'll uh, agree eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the topics we were going to talk about with the outdoor wood boiler was warmth. Mm. Like the experience in the house. And I would preface it by saying that we built this house ourselves like eight or nine years ago. Almost ten years ten ago. Ten years ago. Yeah. And at that point we built it, we super insulated it and everything. You know, modern houses are built that way. But we built it with just a little micro heater, a little propane heater. So it has no central heat. There's no, no furnace. Yeah. It's not like no... a heating system. It's just a little heater. And the heater's in one corner of the living room and it's supposed to heat the whole house. Yeah, so so every year we pretty much just froze our asses off in that house. It's just been cold. There were some space heaters. There were some wool We even had some frozen pipes, I think, at one point. Anyway. Previously, it was frosty. It was frosty in there. A lot of Warm wool sweaters fire, and stuff. The colder the farther away you got. Melissa no knits way. a lot of stuff, so yeah, that kept us alive. As you can see, I'm still dressed for winter. <laughs> All right, now, now we're how, back to... How would you describe the outdoor wood boiler in terms of the heat in the house this winter? It was, it was relaxing. For the first time in my whole entire life, I was actually <laughs> relaxed during the winter. It was hot as heck in there. It was hot. It was, it was almost too hot, but that's okay. That's fine. It was I'd rather amazing. have hot than cold. We did a weird thing, that, which I haven't seen other people do, where we Opening just... Opening the windows? We installed uh, uh, radiators throughout the house. Yeah. So we didn't, we didn't like hook this baby into a central furnace you know and do it that way we installed radiators throughout the house so we had radiant heat but kind of euro style not like radiant heat in the floor i really liked our radiators they're very Oof. like low profile yeah. and we only ended up needing to have like two or three of them on at any given day so oft often yeah. like they weren't yeah. they like the profile was even lower because some of them just we would turn them on you know in the morning for a couple hours just to get the water going but they weren't in use all day long. We, so. we, we kind of, we did a lot of the math, or Melissa did, because I don't know about math. We did the math on like the uh, the VTUs we needed in each boil in each uh, radiator. Oh, I see. This is a way to say that I got it wrong. Oh, I like that. That's good. <laughs> and so she so totally funny. screwed up, man. <laughs> no, I was trying Too to, much heat. I was just, I think we, we wanted to play it on the safe side. Well, the thing is, when it did get really, like, my childhood yeah, in New yeah. York was that it got below zero often in the winter. And when it did get down to the teens or zero, which it didn't even go below zero this winter, which is when like climate change. When you were out of town one time, it was below zero. Below zero. And that's when you had, had everything all on. the radiators yeah, on. Yeah. So, so and plus, 
this system's also supposed to feed the barn. So once we get that fully yeah. hooked in, heat the workshop. I do think that the heat will be a little bit more like manageable <laughs> next winter. It won't be like but sauna. the heat was so nice. It was just really warm in the house. It was the kind of winter where you go inside and you actually take your jacket off. Yeah, we hadn't really experienced that it before. It was great. You could be warm and go for a walk in the freezing cold and know that you were coming back to a warm house. So it was just like so. Spread. On the positive side, let's put a checkbox Pro and a couple heat. of X's on the actual experience of the warmth in the house. Mm -hmm. On the maintenance side of thing, having to feed it every day. And you cleaned it. You cleaned it once a week. And clean it. Once a month. I got black lung. Uh, having to clean it every week and you know fill it every day. It's like there was something fun about that. Yeah, we got into it. In a little house in the prairie kind of way. I kind of miss it now. Like I think to myself, <laughs> it took me a while to transition out of like at yeah. lunchtime, oh, we got to yeah. go to the fire. But it's still, it's not modern life. Modern life is just turn the thermostat mm -hmm. and walk away, you know, and pay the bill. This but, is pay no heating bill because we're just burning wood from jobs. But the thing is, this kind of heat, like we were both raised in households and you probably were too, where like oh, heat man. was at a premium. It was like- You touch you that thermostat, your mom hits you with the spoon. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> a brick, bad, but. she throws a brick at you. <laughs> but you were like, heat was a premium thing. Yeah, it was yeah. like, put on another sweater, don't turn up the heat. Yeah. And we just and this is like if it's too high you just open the window. We just felt, I felt like it was like this luxurious yeah. kind of like it was like gourmet. We, I think we both felt like guilty for the first couple of months, just like yeah. Melissa's cousin. Can we, just, can we share the heat with everybody? Like you know. <laughs> Melissa's cousin Jimmy, who lives uh, like on the other side of the lake, he's got an outdoor uh, wood boiler also, and I was talking to him about it, and he just said to me, you know, the heat, our house is seventy five degrees, his garage is seventy five degrees, like it's just a different way to live. I don't think we ever kept our house above 68, oh, which man. meant 45 in the kitchen. I remember you know? like being a kid and, or even being in like, uh, the first time I had my own apartment and I set that thing on like 55. Oh yeah. Like there yeah, was no- You don't no, want to pay that heating bill. Yeah, pay that heating yeah. bill, yeah. so. So it's pretty luxurious. Yeah. Uh, the machine itself and the, everything, we threw down some serious cash. Yeah. I said before in the previous video that we think it's going to pay for itself in four years I think so. because we had zero propane bill this winter. Like we just didn't use it at all. And then if we take the cost of that, it's gonna take four years to pay for itself. So and it was expensive. That, like it was it was not cheap, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, it's got like a 25 year warranty. And we put it in ourselves, which saved, I think, double the cost probably. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and our relationship survived that <laughs> too, you know. <laughs> all right, when we first dropped the video about installing this bad boy, uh, there were a lot of questions and comments and stuff on the video. That I know was, what the first question was. <laughs> Okay, but there there was like a pattern to the questions, like things that kept coming up over and over again. And the first one was, why is it so far from the house? Why is it so far from the house? People kept asking us that. Like, you guys are nuts, man. Why did you put that thing so far from the house? Well, when it's so hot and you have to have the windows open and this thing's smoking, you don't want it in your backyard, like right next to your house yeah, if you can help yeah. it. Or, or you need a taller chimney. We just, we really didn't want it up against the house. We've got a lot of space. Like, we have a bigger property and we like to space things out. Plus, the smoke exists. Like, often, like, we did situate it so that it, the predominant wind blows the smoke away from the house. But sometimes, Especially when there was no wind, it would, just, it would kind of waft around the house and stuff. Even yeah. at, what are we at, 200 feet? Mm -hmm. 150, 100, 170. 171.3 feet. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so for us, it was perfect. There were some people saying, dude, you're going to hate trudging out there in the snow to feed the boiler. That's fine. I mean, going outside to feed the boiler, you're going to be outside to feed the boiler anyway. Yeah. So like an extra 100 feet is yeah. like... Maybe in Whatever. a few years when I'm 95. And I have to like wheel you out here? Yeah, that might be hard for her. I'm gonna wheel you out here though. <laughs> I'm gonna sit you right here and hand you the logs. Here. Now with that said, we did have some wickedly cold days out here feeding the boiler. Mm. Uh, there were these times you kind of reach under the pile and the snow <sighs> falls on the back of your neck. Yeah, it's just awful. So hopefully that will be alleviated by the shed that Melissa's building for us. <laughs> um, but the distance from the house question, we we're happy with that. It did add some expense. The line, the buried line cost mm -hmm. some dough. It was like $17 a foot. So it would have been cheaper to it would put have it closer, cheaper to house, closer to the house. But I just, I would, I, if I had to do it again, I'd do it again. Yeah. And uh, as for heat degradation or heat loss or whatever, 
if we we measure like I was running around with my thermometer all the time. And you think I'm the one that's like oh for snickety. <laughs> and the heat loss between the boiler and the house, I think it was three degrees. Yeah. So you know maybe it would have been two or one if we were closer. It was just kind of insignificant. The other reason was we wanted to put it in between the house and the barn. So like it's heating the barn, which is over this way. So putting it here meant that it was 170 to the house and one. 50 or 120 yeah, to the barn, yeah. so it's kind of like... Also, uh, stacks of firewood and mice kind of go together. <laughs> Were there other trends in the question? Yeah, question number two. How much wood do you have to feed it and how oh, often? Oh, that's right. Everybody wants to know that. We just have an efficient house, I think makes it, it makes a huge Small difference. Small and efficient. And we yeah. have, this is a new heater. We're taking care of it, like doing all the maintenance and cleaning it. And he's doing all the maintenance. So cleaning it out in the back, using the right kind of wood, all those things meant that we could only we only had to load it once a day. We just loaded it once a day. On the really cold days, if we hadn't loaded it perfectly the day before, I would come out in the mornings and add some wood. But pretty much it was once every 24 hours. I've read a bunch on the forums of other people with their boilers where they're feeding them twice a day or three times a day. It just depends on your situation. If you have an old 1900 house that's drafty as heck, it's just a different deal. But I think in the end we burned... We're not sure how many cords yet. Five or I six cords. Because we we used some logs and we, some just we got stack through this stuff winter. Up. We got through this winter. Next the winter, the whole we'll know. cord measurement is based on such particular stuff, like eight by four by four. We just had piles of wood. Yeah. Next year we hope to have a little more. Oh boy. We hope to have a little more organization. <laughs> but I think we were at like five or six cords. Yeah. Four or six cords. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Another question, when do you turn it on and when do you turn it off? Oh. Now this is our first year, so this is not a how-to video. <laughs> um, but we we shut we it down it. a little early. We started late and we, we shut it down a little we early. We shut it down a little early. The, the weather got warm. We were kind of running low on hardwood. Like we had some more we could split. but we So were we, like, went, we ended up April 1st shutting it down. And right now it's May 4th. And it's still a little chilly. It's still a little chilly. We could have, you know, we had a couple, two 80 degree days in between April 1st and now. Those were nice days. Those were nice days, but the rest of it's been pretty I cold. think next year we'll probably run it a little bit later. Anyway, so that's kind of like a thing. How long do you burn it? Depends on your seat, like where you are and where your weather starts Some to change. Some people even go year round because they're heating greenhouses and hot stuff like that. Hot tubs and hot, hot water heaters. Swimming pools. Okay, yeah. that was the other thing. Did you jack it into your, that was like question number four is like, did you jack oh, it into your, into hot, your water hot water heater, heater, heater or your furnace? I bought all the stuff to do that and then I kind of put that on the to-do list and I haven't done it yet. But we do have the manifold to heat our hot water. Well, I'll do that before next winter. It just makes sense. There's no re I mean, there's so much. This thing produces so much hot water. It's just our, crazy. The hot, the hot water in our house was actually preheated. So like if you, because everything was in the basement. In the basement. <laughs> so if you turned on the hot water, like in the kitchen, it used to take forever to get warm. It was, it was like, like nice, insta warm. Just from the packs picking up the temperature in the basement. Yeah. Everything in the, the, it was so weird. Like everything in the house was so warm. Including the basement, yeah. which is usually like, like an ambient kind of 60 or whatever. It was yeah. hot down there. Yeah. So. It, the other thing we've had as a question, and this is kind of like, we might have different answers to this. If there's anything we would have done differently, and you saw on the install how we did it, uh, we, we pretty much tried to do the whole thing ourselves, from excavating the trenches to laying the green pipe. Turns out he's good with an excavator. <laughs> that was a really nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we, we were asked the question if we would do anything differently. Concrete pad. Totally yeah, differently. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> but whatever template you were following, I think it got <laughs> turned around. So our concrete pad was not the right shape or size or anything. Mm. He did follow the thing, but I think he followed it for It the was for wrong a different heater. I put down a pad for a different heater. Anyway, and then we ended up adding an extra pad when he put the concrete. But we could have had a lot more. But we could have had, a, I would think, more concrete, more gravel. It's kind of like a messy enterprise around the heater. You've yeah. got a lot of wood and ash and, ash and, and stuff everywhere. It'd just be nice to have more. Because then you could just spray it down more easily at more the end pavement, of the season and, yeah, and, yeah, and shovel it and cool. stuff. I think where we came into the house, that was a big question for us. Like oh, where, where the, the pipe where the was going to come in. The house. That meant where we were situating the heater. You and think that was good? I'm happy with it, but at the same oh, time... she's not happy with that. I really, I don't know. Where it she comes in the happy. basement is a little... We try to keep preserving parts of the basement so that you could have like a finished portion of it. And it just keeps getting more and more utilities and weird places. <laughs> So for me, it's like it would be a pipe dream to be like, oh, it could have come into the house different place and then yeah. been more hidden or more, you know. We had to, we came into the house in one place and then we had to run it all the way to the utility room in the basement to put the manifold it's in. It's kind of an inefficient way to do it. It was just a little inefficient. So, but it, but it works for where it's outside. In the end, it kind of made sense. So yeah, that all worked know, out. It all makes sense. Yeah. But as for the boiler itself, I, I, I'm happy with this thing. It's a what is it? A central boiler, classic edge or whatever. 
But since we got this, I've seen on, on forums online, people with all kinds of boilers that take like hella big logs and stuff. So I think if, if I had to do it over again, I would do some research about boilers and maybe buy a different boiler. It's funny because you did a lot of research about the boilers and this was like the I know, one we I came know. to. Plus it's like who stocks them in your area? I couldn't find anything. This is like the only thing I could find in this area. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I've just i just seen some other ones that look pretty sweet. So yeah. there's a lot of different machines out there. I would definitely, you know, if, if you're a planner, that's not me, but if you're a big planner, maybe look around a little more. Yeah. And then the other thing was like the hookup between the house and the barn. Like in this, this box has a very small, this heater has a very small, oh, yeah. so small. box where you can put all the tubes in and have all the plumbing yeah. for the pumps. It's not really like, like it's, it, it's designed to run to two system, like two buildings, but it's not really but, space for it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you'd change about that. Just knowing that ahead of time. Some people know. put the whole thing up on something yeah. and do all the underground, yeah. or like in a box. I think knowing some of that ahead of time would have, because yeah. I just know we struggled together. You're living together, you learn. and you you alone. You're like, living together. Like, yeah. Yeah. And the 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 pump itself. We installed one of them. Oh yeah. Upside down yeah. or inside yeah. out or whatever. I burned out the first pump in the first day. <laughs> the first day. Just put it in sideways. That thing died. So there's just been stuff like that. That was like yeah. 160 bucks, just gone. You know? Yeah, but you figure it out, little things like that. And yeah. otherwise, it's run. I've been amazed at how it's just, it just run, it just ran. It's like going. It's going right now. I mean, the pumps are pumping the water right yeah. now, circulating all and the time. And we turned it on, and we installed the radiators, and it wasn't like a big problem. There weren't leaks everywhere. It didn't take forever to figure it out. And oh, this system or to get the air out here. It was just, just heat. It just worked, and we had heat. It was heat. like we went from no heat yeah. at all to like heat, and it was and if, like if you're at all into like campfires or fires in your fireplace or anything there's something kind of fun about stoking the fire there's just i don't know there's something really satisfying about having yeah. a fire going it's nice to know how you're heating your house like for me i really enjoyed knowing that it was like the wood that we put in here was what was actually heating our house it wasn't just yeah. some mystery of like a furnace with natural gas or propane that was coming from somewhere else or had to be trucked in the big like, mystery used to be the cool. money going out the back door <laughs> to the freaking propane company that's really so. stinked 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 stunked it was rank Stunk. <laughs> yeah. So that brings season one of the heater to a close. To a close. Wrapped up. I'm ready for season two. Can you tell? I'm like... I think we're going to do a video about building our woodshed when Melissa does that. That's coming up. And uh, otherwise, we'll just kind of, you know, keep you posted on the wood boiler. Mm -hmm. And if, obviously, if you have questions, hit us up in the comments down below. We'll respond and, you know, give us a hard time, be productive, whatever. And then, as always, it should probably be mentioned that this is not really like a how-to video it's just the story of how we did it with I mentioned this... that oh you just, did that just to make sure okay say it twice <laughs> just how we did it with this boiler thanks for checking it out